and welcome to Edge of You. Tonight we are on the EdReach Network, <laughs> sort of. Uh, you probably saw the tweets. We are having a little YouTube debacle. Um, so we're running through Edge of You, but posting on the EdReach page. So confusion <laughs> maybe, but yes, we are actually on the EdReach Network. We are on show number five in our second season, and of course our very first with EdReach. We actually feature, pa feature panels of experts that, uh, with a purpose, we want to discuss and dissect the current trends and topics in education that are affecting all of us today. For tonight's show, we are going to be discussing the expanding networks for educators. What that means exactly is how to leverage these networks and to participate in them as well. And speaking of networks for educators, before we begin, don't forget that EdReach is actually on Stitcher Radio. Um, Stitcher is the hottest radio platform on the internet right now, and they are t taking education forward by giving EdReach and education innovators like ourselves everywhere a great place to publish content. So make your morning and afternoon drive a learning experience, especially if you live in the Atlanta area. <laughs> Listen to the EdReach shows on Stitcher.com. That traffic is insane. Go to edreach.us slash Stitcher to listen online or download the app for iOS and Android, and we thank Stitcher for their support of the EdReach Network. So we are, speaking of EdReach, we're going to say that a lot tonight. We are just so excited <laughs> about joining EdReach, um, and we'll be discussing more about EdReach in just a little bit. But uh, again, we're big on our back channels, so please participate in our back channels. Uh, we will share the links again on Twitter, um, and also on uh, well, on G+, if you're there, you're there. So if you need to find us, though, you can just Google search the EdReach Network and look under their events, and we'll be right there for our lively back channel, which has already been going on. Somebody made tea earlier as they waited for us. I <laughs> 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 appreciate that. <laughs> and uh, on Twitter, we're on the hashtag EduView. So please participate, share some thoughts. We always learn everything, lots of things from our audience. So we love to uh, talk with you guys. Also, um, <clears throat> before we kind of get into the details of talking about the expanding network for educators, let's uh, take a moment for new people who are watching us for the first time, first time wondering who are these people. Uh, to reintroduce ourselves. Uh, we have very diverse experiences and expertise. So I'm going to say, Jamie, you're up first. Introduce yourself. All right, sure will. I'm Jamie Vandergrift. I am an instructional technology consultant. I'm currently working um, in a lot of roles, but mainly with Fulton County Schools in Atlanta, Georgia. I have uh, taught for in the elementary realm for about eight years. And so I, I love elementary, but have really expanded into middle and high school and understanding the diversity that lies in our schools. And um, I, I absolutely love all that has to do with instructional technology, but I more so like what has to do with professional learning opportunities and building people um, more than talking about apps or devices, per se. And I love being able to work um, with this Edge of You team, but I also am a director for EdCamp Atlanta and the social media chair for the Georgia Educational Technology Conference. And in my spare time, I also <laughs> <laughs> I also am a co-moderator for the new teacher chat that happens Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Awesome. Thank you, Jamie. Kate, how about yourself? Well, I am Kate Matthews. I am District Instructional Technology Specialist for Fayette County Schools. There are three of us in my department, and I work exclusively with teachers and faculty and staff, helping them implement and embed technology into their instruction. My department is responsible for initiatives and support with anything that really comes across uh, our, our desks, so to speak, with technology that involves technology. So we're very much involved in the professional learning aspects, um, learning what works, what doesn't work for teachers, polling teachers, surveying teachers to find out what it is that they need and hopefully to meet their needs. I'm program co-chair at Georgia Educational Technology Conference. I'm the program co-chair this year and also involved with the State Department's Instructional Technology Specialist um, Advisory Committee, as well as involved in COSIN, and <laughs> ISTE. Everybody join ISTE. We're very busy people, clearly. We are. All right, Stacia, yeah. tell us how busy you are. <laughs> wow. Well, I am Stacia McFadden. I am Director of Academic Technology in the Middle School at the Lovett School. Um, Lovett is an, an independent school here in North Atlanta. 
Um, in that role, I was hired primarily to work with teachers. I don't teach a class. Um, I do teach Love at Life lessons, which is something that we our sixth graders rotate through. But I was hired just to work with teachers in integration. So I go in their classrooms, help them with special projects, attend their department meetings. Um, my main goal this year is just to really see if we're fully utilizing and maximizing our one-to-one -one program. Uh, we have uh, MacBook Airs in our fourth through 11th grade. So of course, I'm just responsible for six through eight. Um, so while I'm in the middle school now in an independent school, my background is <laughs> quite varied. Um, I've been a programmer at IBM, um, hated it, <laughs> it just wasn't for me, I'm just not an introvert at all. Went to grad school for computing and education at Teachers College and started working at a public school in the Bronx, New York. So I've been in public schools, I was in a charter school in Washington, D.C., which was a 6th through 12th grade. Um, and then I also have elementary experience at a private school in D.C. <laughs> so um, I have quite an interesting background, teaching and coaching. Um, as far as extracurricular tech activities, I'm treasurer of AATE, which is Atlanta Area Technology Educators. Um, so if you're in Atlanta, it's a great organization to be a part of. We have our first meeting at Wesleyan on the 24th. Uh, with some exciting um, keynotes and workshops for you guys. I'm also um, on the steering committee for iSummit. Um, and so for any school that's interested in going one-to-one -one or is already in a one-to-one -one program, it's a wonderful organization as well that... Did she freeze? She Don't tell me she froze. She did. <laughs> it is <laughs> wonderful though. I, I can't finish it. I could totally finish it for her. She also <laughs> brought Google the Gaffey Summit to Atlanta to the Love It School last summer, and yes, she's phenomenal. Is. And we love her. I'm <laughs> right. finish that up for her. I will. I, I think um, our hangout was overwhelmed. Yeah. I know one I thing know I, I, I didn't say. My um, I'm a public school district south of Atlanta. Fayette mm -hmm. County is south of Atlanta, and there are approximately 22,000 students in in my district. I was hey, I got I you. I got you by about. 72, 70,000 kids. 70? Yeah, uh, Fulton, I <laughs> okay. believe, is at 92,000 kiddos. You Comparing, no, 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 you guys can compare, but I come, I came from Gwinnett County Public Which is the largest mm -hmm. in, the in, the in the state. In the state, yes. almost in the south. Almost in the southeast, exactly. So, yeah, my background, mm -hmm. we kind of finished up for you, by the way. Yes, yeah, yeah, we did. Sure we did. Oh, I'm Kate tonight. <laughs> <laughs> you are. I'm so sorry. So we talked about you um, bringing the Gaffey Southern Summit to Love It. Yeah, in January. So yes. uh, join us. What's the date? Is that the, the yes? The 11th and it's, it's the 11th and the 12th. It's a Saturday and a Sunday. Mm -hmm. um, but it's well worth giving up your weekend for. Mm -hmm. And that's Absolutely. where we all met. So. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, as for myself. Um, hopefully, I don't overwhelm Hangouts either, but as I was mentioning, I have a public school background, so for eight years I taught in public school, and then I made a leap to private school, which has been quite interesting. I am the classroom teacher here <laughs> on the panel. Um, I teach Spanish, and I've taught music tech, I've taught music history, and I had one random semester of physics that we will talk about later at some point. Um, let's see, I am also a doctoral student at the University of Florida. I am, um, and it's actually in the Educational Technology Curriculum and Structural Pro Instruction Program. Hope, hope to graduate in summer of 2015, and my qualified exams are the week before ISTE. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, and I am actually researching uh, gamification, game based learning. I have a lot of interest in emergent education, um, doing things that are kind of cutting edge, and I like to experiment with my students. So they are my guinea pigs, but sometimes we fail and sometimes we don't, and that's half the fun. Um, I'm a big technophile. <laughs> I love my technology. And um, I'm trying to think what else, I mean, everything else I do other than just edu-view and teaching. Ed teaching takes up a lot of time. Did so. you say you were a Google certified teacher? Did I hear oh, that? Oh, gosh, did I really? Um, hello. <laughs> yeah, okay, again, again, I'm telling you, and I want to say this uh, until I give birth, it is pregnancy brain. I forget everything. How could I forget Chicago? I just I came back from the Google Teacher Academy. Became a Google certified educator. I and by the way, that experience was completely mind blowing, and um, the community of people that I've met has really enriched my life. And some of them are actually interested in what I'm researching, so it's kind of cool to connect with those people and see how Google can uh, play with that. So, yeah. So amongst everything else, uh, you know, I probably won't be here um, in two weeks. I will probably not be here for that show. <laughs> so heads up, my absence. <laughs> 
but that's uh, basically me. And also something else that we all have in common is that we just finished up. Oh, Jamie, did we even say this? We're both organizers for at Camp Atlanta. I did. Okay, I see, I did not. Out. Again, I totally forgot. I oh missed Bernie. <sighs> anyway, we all just went to at Camp Atlanta on Saturday. We did. And it awesome. was amazing, amazing experience. And we gave away an Apple TV. Um, I know, and it was so much fun. And uh, we actually presented while we were there. Nice 25-minute session uh, talking about leveraging Google Hangouts, of all things, um, to kind of help build your network. It was kind of a preview for this show. And uh, we received a lot of great feedback. And one thing that we discovered while we were there <laughs> was the new Q&A feature on uh, Google Hangouts. So that was kind of accidental, but a lot of fun. <laughs> and I do believe that experience is recorded somewhere on air. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I don't DVD. know. It, it was bad. <laughs> we may have deleted that. No. <laughs> it, it was, but it was a lot of fun because we got to experiment it and was. kind of play with it. And I tried to turn it on right now to see if our audience would be interested, but it says the feature is disabled. So go figure. figure tonight, right? Yeah. Well, hey, at least we're broadcasting, so I have absolutely no complaints. So one of the things that we like to do again before we kind of jump into our network thing. Um, is talk really quick about any kind of hot topics that people ha that we've noticed in the Twitter stream and the Google Plus pages, um, anywhere really, and these networks that we're about to talk about, um, that really should be pointed out. So, Jamie, do you have any hot topics you'd like to mention really quick? Well, I think off on the hills of EdCamp Atlanta, um, we weren't the only EdCamp in town that day. Um, EdCamp PS, which I believe was Palm Springs, and Ed Camp Los Altos was also the exact same day. So there were three Ed Camps going on on Saturday. Um, obviously, we weren't able to follow those hashtags. We were a little bit busy. But I think um, <laughs> probably the the big thing that I I just love, um, someone said to me today that I went through this list of t all these things I do, and they said, do you get paid to do all that stuff? <laughs> and I said, um, no, oh, no, I don't get paid to do any of those things. Um, but we pulled that audience um, on Saturday, and at, out of like the hundred and almost sixty people we had there, there was probably a third of those people who were first time ever Ed campers. Yes, and including me, including you, and it, it was it was just crazy. But I think the thing that it's tons of work, and by the end of the day, you're exhausted, and you just think, oh my word, what have I, you know, what have I done? But I can't tell you how many people came up to me afterwards and said, thank you so much for this. This was this was an unbelievable learning experience. These people who had never experienced um, Ed Camp or this philosophy, and just sharing with them the philosophy of what an Ed Camp is and how it's, you know, you vote with your feet and you there's no disrespect if you get up and walk out of a session. You it's your, you know you're expanding your whole day and you want to get the most out of it. And so to have people come up to me afterwards and say thank you so much for this learning experience. It's like those things. That's why we do it. it that's exactly why we do it. And um, a hot topic on that is last night Kristen Swanson tweeted that um, Ed Camp Foundation is officially a national 501c3 Organization. Awesome. That is awesome. So that is going to mean big, big, awesome, wonderful, mm -hmm. awesome, wonderful things for Ed Camps in the future, and that is very, very hot topic. So keep doing it, Ed Camps. Keep pushing on. And similar to what Jamie just talked about, Stacey, you have something you want to talk about real quick? Well, it was so funny because because I got the survey today, and one of the questions was like, "Did you get your money's worth?" <laughs> <laughs> and for those out there who are new to Ed Camp, it's free it's you know thanks to our great sponsors um, edgeview included um, but I was just like I mean that was worth paying for to be honest with you I mean we paid 250 plus for some workshops and you're like that was a waste of my money I could have googled it yeah um, so it was just amazing um, I love that unconference model just kind of going there and getting what you need mm -hmm. um, I love the you know the whole vote with your feet and there was no disrespect I think I walked out of one but only after I contributed you know um, but there were so many great topics going on at the same time you just kind of want it to be everywhere and I find myself struggling because like today even I'm trying to go through the Twitter feed and by the way uh, Ed Camp Atlanta was trending on Twitter um, and so it's really hard to go through the feed now and you know pick out some of those favorites because so many of us are tweeting so 
Um, it was great, and it was just amazing to see the tech smackdown. Um, that line just never went down, and we learned oh my gosh, yes. great things <laughs> uh, just in the tech smackdown. Um, and so, I mean, it was just amazing. So thank you, Kat and Jamie, Jamie. for being a part of that, and um, I'm kind of glad I know you ladies. <laughs> I'm with some heavy rollers. Your turn's awesome. coming. Your turn's coming. Google, uh, Google Summit. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. So speaking of really cool things and talking about our sponsors, we did have some amazing sponsors this year. Um, so definitely go to the web page, you know, just because I kind of put it together. So go and look. And, uh, <laughs> I'll be putting the SmackDown stuff up there tonight, actually. So, hey, if you want to see that long line and what happened, it's about three pages worth of information on a Google Doc. It's incredible. Um, but one of our sponsors was actually Yap. They reached out to us and were like, hey, you know, we, we know you had an app last year, which I actually uh, I developed that as well. And it was just expensive and time-consuming. I didn't like it, so we weren't going to really have anything. They emailed us kind of serendipitously, and it was a huge success. Very, very easy to use, all free, mm. um, and I think awesome. it's amazing. It was amazing for the classroom educator, too, mm -hmm. uh, the way that they have it set up where you actually go to the app on your phone within their own app. So you could have seven different teachers you having an app within the app. Huge success for that session, by the way. Um, it was a make and take, so people actually left having made an app within 25 minutes, if it tells you anything about how simple that is to use. So highly recommend Yap. It's yap.us, I believe. Mm -hmm. So check it out. And uh, Kate, do you have anything to share? Well, I just, I think for me it was just priceless to connect with that many people, like-minded people and people that were there to learn and share. I loved how it just allowed for anyone to walk up and say this is something that I'm doing and I want to share and then you know it's like Stacia said that boat with your feet that was probably to me one of the coolest things and I loved how Jamie presented that to the entire group she said you know it's boat with your feet so when you've got what you need from that particular session you can move on it wasn't you know boat with your feet and if you stink we're out of here kind of thing you know she did a really good job of um, kind of making it such a positive experience and and I just loved it. It was my first ed camp. Um, as a matter of fact, I went back to my district and was just like, we have to do this, you know, um, for the teachers in my school system. It was phenomenal. Yay. And, well, and we're it was, also talking about doing the same thing. It's a, you know, it's, it's your, it's your PLN right there face to face. And that was the other thing yeah. that I loved. Wanda and, and Nikki and, you know, all these people that I know only on Twitter and we're all hugging and, you know, it was phenomenal. And Amy, my friend that I teach with, who's phenomenal, Amy, Amy Pie, um on Twitter. I mean, it was just awesome. And shout out to her. She's watching right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she was at our session. So she's done a live event with us. She does virtual right. events with us. We love Amy. So and, she won Amy. The, and she won the Yap um, what was it, Kat? It, yeah. was a, it was a custom setup. They do have it. It is available where you can contact them, and they will actually custom set up for you. So, you know, me being as busy as I am right now, having, you know, trying to juggle all the things I'm doing at the same time, they're like, hey, you know, if you kind of give us an idea of what you want, we'll put it together for you, and then you can just mm -hmm. go from there. And I'm like, yes. Amen. <laughs> so, so is Amy email. like a groupie? She oh. is. <laughs> And I was so excited that she won that I, like, screamed and yes, scared these two ladies. <laughs> I terrified these two. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm happy for her. Well, I think, Amy, when you become a groupie, you earn the right to actually be on air with us one day. So just That's get right. ready. You're going to have to use that app, and then you're going to have to come tell us what happened with that app. So right. be prepared. Your day's coming. Mm -hmm. That's right. Speaking of speaking of our fans, one of our somebody I've been a fan of for a long time, Peggy George, is extremely active on our back channel on Google Plus. Yes. He yes. actually already shared the SmackDown link earlier. Peggy, you and I oh. have a connection. <laughs> That's so, awesome. Yes, yeah, so um, you can and, check that out and see. And we're talking about uh, Ed Camp, and so um, at um, Ed Camp that we uh, we met a lot of you know new people. Um, but we just got a tweet, and of course I'm, you know, uh, bouncing back and forth. So Rick White, he was at um, Ed Camp, and he says, Watching Ed, you like hearing about something I was actually a part of. So hi, Rick. We are so glad that you're joining us tonight. And he was in our session as well. Um, so we love being able to take that from live to virtual and, and bring everyone along. That's so exciting. Well, let's see. Um, so now I guess we can go ahead and talk about networks. Speaking of networks, granted, of course, 
on conferences, conferences are more in person. But when we talk about networks for educators, we're talking about things that are a little more mobile. So, being that, again, this is our first night at EdReach, we figured that we talk about EdReach and similar organizations that kind of compile um, educators who other educators can watch and learn from, and uh, how we can leverage that for our own education and perhaps um, elsewhere. So, speaking of EdReach, <clears throat> um, when I first reached out to Dan a long, long time ago, I think like summer of 2012, long time ago, um, you know, EdReach is really kind of taking off, and the channels are really growing. And if you don't know what a channel is, you should go to edreach.us and kind of check it out. Um, the channels are different shows that they have put together. There's also a blog channel for disruptors, and that's where I kind of got, got my start with EdReach. And the, 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 the resources there are just amazing. You have things, like I was interested in EdGamer because, again, gamification. And I love listening to their podcast. It's... it's it's fun to be able to take my learning on the road, but some of the some of these things are also video blogs, um, uh, recording like just videos in general that they actually put into podcast format. So there is a lot um, available for uh, people who are interested in really anything, and they kind of just take they take a lot of people in. Like they're just collecting the people, say, hey, if you have a great idea, why not share it? So uh, being a part of that network right now is uh, it's, it's very special. I love the fact that you know we're going to be able to amplify. Um, people's uh, people's professional development, self-professional development at any, any point in time. So, and of course, Stitcher Radio, by the way, I had never heard of before EdReach. How about you guys? Mm -mm. Nope. I have not. Very cool that, you know, that's an app that you can just download and um, you're able to listen to it actually on your computer as well. So, there really isn't an excuse, there's no excuse, <laughs> right, for uh, people not to be able to participate in networks like this. And I'm trying to think, what are some of the other networks that we had brainstormed about. Um, well, I think we all know. Um, I think that the, what we liked about, especially all of these, is that with EdReach, it doesn't matter. You might like gamification. While that's by no means my background, <laughs> there's plenty on EdReach mm -hmm. that fits into my background. So there's such a diverse selection of, of podcasts mm -hmm. and shows that it doesn't matter what your interests are, there's a place for you there. Uh, TeacherCast is another one of those mm -hmm. places. Jeff Bradbury has been broadcasting, and so TeacherCast TV is another way that um, he Jeff has so many different shows. I don't I don't even want to get started on how many different shows he has, but um, I know he does the Tech Educator podcast on Sunday nights with my buddy John Samuelson, who <laughs> again found his way into our show because awesome. he always does. <laughs> Man, oh my gosh. Um, Seriously, I should hit him up on Voxer, like, right now in the middle of the show <laughs> and tell him I'm so tired of him ending up on our show. Um, and then there's, I know, they just started an admin cast or something mm -hmm. like that last night as well, so for principals. I know there's a social studies cast, there's a New Jersey educators cast. I mean, there's just such a wide range of, of where you would fit in. Um, so TeacherCast is another one of those places that you just, have a wealth of resources and whatever you teach or whatever you're looking for, um, I'm pretty sure Jeff does a show for mm -hmm. it as well. So you just have to simply, um, you know, go to teachercast.net. Yeah, oh, it is. I'm mad that I don't know that. <laughs> yeah, .net. Okay. <laughs> Let's edit that part out. Let's pretend I knew that. It's okay. Um, and um, that's another one of those, you know, great resources that, you know, you simply, you have. And I think the thing is, there's a lot of people who want this information that Twitter you you can kind of yeah. work um, and I think these shows are another place other places where you can kind of you don't necessarily have to jump in and be yeah. a part um, but the back channel like Craig Yen he is a the most amazing little back channeler you're gonna find he is always you know with us and then last night I actually was on the back channel for the tech educator podcast and Craig was there you know and it's it's awesome to be able to you know build these overlapping, you know, connections through these different, um, these different, I don't know, avenue, I don't know what we call yeah, them. They're, they're, what do really we call them? That's a good point. There really isn't a good terminology for these things. This is, this is like Twitter amplified. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. There's so much more to it because you're engaging so many more of your senses. You can't just be, you know, completely disconnected, especially if you have a back channel. 
And of course, being a classroom teacher, I'm instantly thinking about how can I bring this into my classroom? <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, oh, I guess I the thing is, you know, um, someone just said, you know, there's really no excuse. But I hear the excuses all the time, but there's just yeah. so much out there. And you talk about all the sensory stuff. Well, there is a such thing as sensory overload. So, you know, Kat, you know, you're doing a lot. You're expecting, you know, Jamie, you have two young boys. I have a 10-year-old. Kate, you have older daughters. How do we balance it all? You know, there is a lot out there, but, you know, how do you keep it all together? How do you balance it and not become overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. And that, that is really difficult. I mean, you can talk about, I'm going to jump into research, warning, cognitive load theory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you should definitely, I, I'll, I'll, I'll save all the jargon for later. But that's something that, you know, people should really read about, especially, you know, those people who are... Um, Extremely active, like ourselves, there are that the, there is it, there are issues there, and mm -hmm. that actually may be one of the biggest issues with getting people to connect to these networks. Because once you're, uh oh, <laughs> we almost need like a sound effect when someone. We do. It. I know. Oh, did you Claire, did you screen capture that one, um, Jamie? We need that. You mean to screen capture that one? Let me see. If no, I can don't do that. that to her. You did that to me. <laughs> We did that to Kate. Poor Kate. Oh, gosh. This could not have been attractive. Sorry, Kate. No, it's okay. Well, since we were talking about that, I asked on I asked out on Twitter what are some of the resources people are using to stay connected. And Allison, mm -hmm. another one of our faithful followers, just said um, she adds them to her Feedly, and she checks it for updates. So, you know, just kind of following other people's mm -hmm. blogs and so forth. So thanks, Allison, for responding. Um, Kelly Webb, who I uh, am doing a little work with in Fulton, I saw that she says she that, um, she's excited to create her own app, and she loved the SmackDown, as do we all. Yeah. And Amy said, too, um, Amy L. Pye, she said the same thing. She's enjoying the Yap app, which I love saying. Yap app. Yap app. And the app's all actually called Yap Box. Yap Box. So if you're looking for it in the App Store, it's Yap Box. And, and that's web-based, too, everyone. Free and web-based is a beautiful thing. Oh, there's Kat. Come oh, back, Kat. Come back, she Kat. Back. Hey there. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> I think the curse now. of Kate. Do you see now? <laughs> <laughs> trickled all over. Oh, my gosh. The curse of Kate. I love that. You yeah. guys. I know, Kate, you've gotten all of us. Jamie, we are not going to push that on you tonight. You've had enough stress today. <laughs> well, I just think it's funny that I'm talking about cognitive load theory and bam, my wireless yes. comes out. Mm -hmm. It was too much. It was just too deep mm -hmm. for this channel. I know. Kat, yeah. You're too it's, deep. YouTube <laughs> can't handle your cognitive load theory tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you're right, Kat. I mean, I think there is a saturation point. I know mm -hmm. sometimes I have to step back. Um, and, and my director of technology will say to me that I'm a bark inspector instead of looking at the whole forest because I'm trying to solve <laughs> something or I'm involved, you know, in the latest and greatest of what's coming and teachers are constantly asking me, you know, what should I do? Should I do this? Or, and, and it's so true. You, you do get to that saturation point where you have to step back and read a book, you know. Or <laughs> I like that bark inspector. Mm -hmm. Try that. Yeah. It, it is full of analogies, but, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, you know, you do. You have to keep that larger picture in mind, just as a teacher has to keep her instructional goals in mind. So Instead true. of focusing on the technology or the latest and greatest mm -hmm. app or whatever, she needs to keep those goals in mind of what it is that she wants her students to achieve. Mm -hmm. And I feel that way, I, and I can relate. Well, Craig Yen um, says he continues to follow his PLN, and he also loves to take five podcasts. So shout out to Dave mm -hmm. Guyman, who was on our show as well. Mm -hmm. And um, we mm -hmm. mentioned him at, at Camp Atlanta as well. So we love those take five podcasts. And it's just for those teachers who only have five minutes. That's all you need. You don't need a one-hour workshop. You don't need 30 minutes even. Um, right. Five minutes will do it. No, that's so true. So, I mean, speaking of, Going, trying to combat cognitive load theory, you really want to have something that's nice and short and sweet, go for that. Mm -hmm. You know, according to some brain-based theory, it's, it's your age plus one. So, like, if I'm 31, so at every 32 minutes, I need to stop and actually summarize or, like, digest, or else my brain kind of goes overflow. So, I mean, that's according to research. So perhaps it's something else that these networks, you know, professional development, 
and whatnot need to kind of take in. Maybe that's why at camp the 25-minute sessions were really, really, really successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. If, uh, if, if you were at ed camp, you know, but uh, something we tried a little differently. We found that we were asking a lot of people, you know, hey, what, you, you're going to share some really cool things, and there was this anxiety of, oh, my gosh, I can, there's no way I can do that. That's just overwhelming. And so we started talking, and we thought, well, what if we made shorter sessions? And so half our board were, um, we had 50-minute sessions, and then half our board was 25-minute sessions. And uh, I believe, did, did all the 25 sessions fill up? All but, I think, two. Okay. Yeah. Someone yeah. And there were a few that were just, like, very intimate chats. Like, I was in oh, one, yeah. and there were just three of us, and it was just great. We all had different experiences, but mm-hmm. it was just as powerful as the ones that were packed. Oh, extremely so. So it, it was very, it was successful, and I really enjoyed that. Just having something, I guess, being an ADHD mind, you know, you really want to be like engaged constantly. So <laughs> that's me, and I hope you know the teachers that are listening understand. Hey, we're teaching. Well, in my case, we're teaching middle schoolers, so you're talking about a 13 minute mm-hmm. <laughs> attention, attention span. span. So you've that's got, to, you know, you got to change it up. And I mean. Mm-hmm. Cat, even though I am, I'll say 38. I just don't think I can handle 39 <laughs> minutes. I'm perfectly okay with 20. Well, so. Listen, now you guys don't even start complaining because I'm like <laughs> 45 minutes. Right. <laughs> I don't have 45 minutes to do anything anymore. So but true. there must be an age when it goes the other way because I can't oh, see sure. a 70 <laughs> <Yeah>. year old <laughs> being engaged for 71 yeah. minutes. I'm sure there's a paper about it somewhere, but I don't have the attention span to look for it. <laughs> Speaking of, um, so, and there's one other network that we haven't mentioned. I actually don't know too much about it, but it's the um, BAM radio network. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I know it's, they, they, they say they're the voice of the education community. I really have not explored that too much. Nancy so. Blair is another consultant and friend of Jamie mm-hmm. and mine, and she's on BAM radio, um, and she's really with some heavy hitters, too. Tom and Whitney? find that link, yes. Mm-hmm. I have it right here. It's bamradionetwork.com. Oh, okay. yeah. And I'm looking well, at it. They even have parents' radio, which is I find very interesting. That's, see, yeah, that's see actually sleek. that's a good idea. They also yeah. incorporate parents because parents have a very mm. interesting perspective on everything as well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, you guys, if if nobody's if you haven't heard about this yet, this is definitely something to check out. I've been playing. I've been looking at it off and on all day. Well, and yeah. BAM Radio is in conjunction with the BAM Awards, correct? I believe so. I would think so. I believe so, but they do have some heavy hitters. I'm looking at the BAM 100 influential voices, and I'm just like, wow, definitely, and, and a nice variety of people too. So it's not all just ed tech. You also have, you know, right. um, uh, people who are just gen- about education in general. So, and of course, our, one of our friends, Jerry Blumengarten, is on there. Oh, Jerry. <laughs> Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. Man. I know we love him. <laughs> Where's his list on cognitive theories? Or- Load theory. Jerry, if you're listening, you, you need a page. You need a page. He does. He totally does. And I'm just trying music. to find a page he doesn't have. Mm-hmm. So if he probably has a page. I'm calling to Will Barry. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but speaking of also other networks, and something we'll talk about in the future a little more, um, are organizations that put together, uh, like, organized webinars mm-hmm. constantly, like weekly. So this mm-hmm. is kind of a shout-out to Peggy George, again, who is one of our biggest mm-hmm. people who participate in our back channel. But she has Classroom mm-hmm. 2.0 Live that has been going on for a long time and they are very active with back channels um, you know within the chat itself and then of course you have a downloadable mp3 version, you have a video mm-hmm. version, like they, they give everything to you so you can kind of go back and listen to it over and over again but that's more, I mean there's kind of that line between webinar and you know like a networked kind of broadcast but and, I mean okay. yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I was just going to say Peggy has shared on our Google Plus page some fabulous free virtual conferences are coming up too. This weekend's mm-hmm. Global STEM X, then Library 2.0, followed by Reform Symposium and Global Ed. Um, so thank you, Peggy, for sharing that. Mm-hmm. So would you guys also consider online conferences that are free like th- like those? Yes, definitely. To be, to be networks for educators where they can go and they can access recordings and videos mm-hmm. and participate, like, participate with back channels and whatnot. So definitely those are considered in our umbrella. Yes, sure. mm-hmm. but we had a hard time getting people to do this, and when you mentioned, because it's on a weekend, and so, you know, that was one of the, you know, 
Mm, you know, it's like you work hard Monday through Friday, you're up late grading papers. So like what's the incentive for giving up mm -hmm. a Saturday or giving up an evening as well? Um, mm -hmm. and I just think you have to just be one of those self-motivated lifelong learners. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. like there's no external thing that can motivate you if you're just not internally motivated. So right. great stuff out there though. So that, that brings me to an interesting question. So when we're talking about networks for educators, and there's this different there's this differentiation between what we do, for example, you know, we, we have a video that's now going to be accessible, by the way, on podcasts and to sit your radio, versus something that requires a certain amount of your time, you know, like more of a traditional conference format. Mm -hmm. You know, I would think that teachers would be more inclined to go with these kind of networks that we're talking about as opposed to conferences and especially if they're free conferences because sometimes you have you know you just wake up and you're like I don't I don't want to have to go mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so and at least with the networks here you have the benefits of well I can just watch you know episodes 1 through 18 <laughs> if I miss them it's right. kind of like it's kind of like Hulu for educators <laughs> there you go yeah but again I guess that just depends on your learning style like you mm -hmm. know I am not the best online learner um, but I love where I can meet people mm -hmm. and, you know, feed off of their energy. I'm not saying I can't do it, but I just love the people interaction. Like you said, meeting up with your PLN and really connecting face to face. Right. Um, so I think it's just kind of personal. And that's one thing we're looking at now is this whole boom of, you know, MOOCs and online learning and blended mm -hmm. learning. Yes. You know, everybody always wants to know how do you really foster those relationships? Um, it's hard enough for adults, but can you imagine kids trying to really bond with the teacher that, you know, they may never see? Mm -hmm. So it's just one of those things. And again, how do you balance it? You know, what's the best way to do it? You know, we love the hangout form, but we also love when we can hug on each other. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just it's one of those personal mm -hmm. preference things. Well, and it was nice for all four of us to be together in the same place because mm -hmm. I think the last time we were all four together was at the Google Summit last year. Uh, so uh, and that's been like a year. So in a year, we see each other weekly, virtually, but only once have we all four been in the same place. Mm -hmm. And while you know, Kat and I are you know one place, and Kate and I are another place, and Stacia and I are another place, it's not you know it's not the same as when we can all be together. And I mm -hmm. I think that you know those times are hard, and we had to give up a Saturday to do it, but. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, amazing. And then all four of us will be at GAETC, right? That's yeah. right. That's right. I think we need to get together. I know we've had some requests on Twitter um, from participants from Ag Camp Atlanta who would like for us all to get together at GAETC. So, stay, um, so Jamie and I will be running our, our uh, mm -hmm. committee stuff, but we'll definitely try to do that and get together. Oh, I totally yeah. agree. But um, speaking of moot, moot of, I can't even say it today, moot communities, I have to say that one that really sticks out in my head, and those of you who are interested, and this is something that I've been thinking about a lot, are repeatable MOOCs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the one that um, I was involved in for a while and um, haven't haven't had time to really kind of get back into, it's and it's just finished up its third iteration, going into its fourth iteration is the games-based learning MOOC that's been really popular. Mm -hmm. And they just, you know, they, they, they build a community because people come back and they have some new material, but they also have the old material. And they have um, they have a tweet chat, they have a hangout that they do in different you know situations and different times. So it's a big time commitment for the people who run it, but at the same time, it gives a lot more options to the people who want to participate. So perhaps mm -hmm. can, just in case there's people out there new to MOOCs, we explain what it stands for. Sure, massively open online course is a MOOC, yeah. and there's you know there's all these different jargons that are going around right now like X MOOC and C MOOC and We'll get into that one day. <laughs> but basically, it's just a free, um, <clears throat> very, very large attended uh, online course of some sort that's put together. Generally, it doesn't last a whole semester. You'll get maybe like, you know, some, some can be four weeks. Some can be really short. Hybrid Pedagogy is a great online journal, by the way, that is, uh, it is uh, OER, which is an open educational resource, so it's free. Um, and they actually had something called a MOOC MOOC. <laughs> oh my word! Uh, yes, and there are a lot of jokes going around about MOOCs. I'm telling, no, no, no. Yeah. It, this was actually a MOOC. They they had a MOOC, but they called it MOOC MOOC, and that was the monster that they developed. And it was fast, it was short, and it was lively on Twitter. And thought, seriously, look for the hashtag hashtag MOOC MOOC, and you'll learn a lot about that. Mm -hmm. But um, 
just very, very interesting, the participation that they had, and it was very fast, which was nice. So, um, and you know, there's all these questions about participation and, you know, people who drop out. There's always that huge dropout rate within the first or second week. Um, and so, you know, building a network, something like this, you know, having those offerings, the reason why the games-based learning MOOC has been so successful is because they have so many offerings. Mm -hmm. So perhaps something for classes, even online courses, to take into consideration. Now, I wonder how long these MOOCs will be free. You know, just like with all good things, the free thing comes to an end. Yep. Um, so I just I just wonder how long realistically they can last. Well, if Stanford and MIT can offer free online courses, I mean, you know, and they're not charging for them, and people can just take them. They don't earn the credit, obviously, but they can take them. They're open right. courses. I mean, surely that will be the wave of the future. Kat, you disagree? Well, it, it, my problem is <clears throat> it, I, I want people to be able to get credit for these courses. The ones where they don't get credit are essentially like, okay, here's a video from the professor, watch mm -hmm. this, do this activity, this, 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 okay, move on to the next one. It's very self-paced, which is good mm -hmm. if you're, if you're self-motivated, but you don't have that network. I mean, unless you're very participatory, and those of us who are really busy, like, I, I, I hop into a, a MOOC, and, you know, I might be really interested in it, but I will lose interest after time if I don't have a connection mm -hmm. with people. Yeah. Um, it makes me actually think of my doctoral program where there's uh, 24 of us in a cohort, and we actually created a Facebook page just for us. And I told them just tonight that one of the reasons that I'm doing so well is because of my network, my community with them. Because mm -hmm. you know, we connect just for fun sometimes. You know, We talk about things, and we share material and discussions. And it, I think that's what's really important to incorporate in a MOOC. And I'm thinking that if these big universities have those professors who do host these MOOCs, Mm -hmm. To really make them worthy of course credit, you need to have you know participatory things like that, and not just discussion mm -hmm. boards. You know, actually, right. somewhat digital face-to-face -face activities like this would be great. Well, girls, I gotta tell you, with still one degree that I've got to attain for my own sanity, there's no way I'm doing anything that I don't get credit <laughs> for at this point. <laughs> not a chance, not a way, not a half. Right. But just thinking of an EDS or an EDD out there in my future, I've got to get credit for every last thing I do. Yeah, that's for an my excellent time. point. Mm -hmm. But well, I guess so the true. other side of that is, you know, I have a cousin who's at USC, and it's 40000 a year. So if you're paying that to get that USC experience, and then someone else can take it free online uh -huh. and get credit, you're like, uh, yeah, why true. am I paying this? Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot. There's a huge discussion of that. And by the way, if, if anybody watching, you know, if you have an experience with MOOCs, we, gotta have, we definitely have to have a discussion about this. I might be asking some of the people from hybrid pedagogy to come jump on and tell us about their experience. And we can definitely talk about it. But this is making me think of something else. Talking about these networks and, you know, teacher, I guess, teacher buy-in. If you want to bring in something like this into your own district and your school level, professional development. So perhaps you want to have a show like EduView or you want to mm -hmm. have a massively open online course that has active participation just within your own faculty. I mean, why aren't people doing more of this? Could teachers actually buy into this idea? Would this actually be a good replacement for that, uh, professional development that takes up your planning period? Uh, I think we're <laughs> away from that. I, yeah, because you know what? As much I think, as much as we are tech savvy women, and you know, we're the minority because you know we're still in a male dominated industry. I think there's still a lot of teachers that want their hands held. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and need their hands held, you know, because, again, you don't want to just do technology for the sake of doing technology. Right. Right. Like, you know, I did a workshop the other day, and it was not even called anything technology. It was called Let the Pedagogy Lead. Like, mm -hmm. you've got to keep that first, and then if we can find the tool that will enrich that, then that's what we do. Exactly. And so, you know, we're the ones who have that expertise to give the teacher and say, hey, this is a great idea, but let's look at this, or let's look at this, or we don't think this is going to get you where you really, you know, want it to go. So there's some teachers who can handle that, but then there's still a lot of teachers out there who I don't think um, are ready for that. And I mean, they're just so overwhelmed with other things as well. That's, that's exactly right, and that's the key. They are overwhelmed. Um, and I know that we just had this discussion today in my office, as a matter of fact. You know, you, you almost want to say, okay, only those that are interested come to the professional learning during your planning. Well, then you'd have the same group over and over, which is fine. But what about those others that that group totally intimidates 
And if they are not exposed to whatever it is that you're trying to share for that particular session, then they may never even begin to, to try and branch out. Mm -hmm. So it, it is, I agree with Stacia. I think there are a lot of teachers out there who still need that support. And, mm -hmm. you know, hand-holding is a good term for it. I don't mean to be hand-holding as, as in they're not capable. Right. Just that support needs to be there. Mm -hmm. See, now you guys got me thinking about my dissertation because this is actually, y'all, we are talking about my dissertation right now and it's freaking me out just a little bit. Well, as, um, long as, you, as long as you give us credit, we're good. Yeah, there you go. I, I, you know, I can, I, there is APA citation for <laughs> videos. So I'll take it. You know, there's also an MLA citation and I think APA now for tweets. So, oh. awesome news. I know. But I'm thinking about, um, you know, I'm really into, you know, gamifying things, and it's all about increasing teacher buy-in. It's, it's intrinsic motivation mm -hmm. and maybe a little bit of extrinsic as well. So there's just so much that goes into building these networks. That there's you know, an article, Kat, in ISTE's magazine just this month about really? gamification and about a man, and I'm sorry, I can't remember where he's from, but he literally turned his professional development, professional learning sessions into a game. Yep. For teachers, and that re and he talks about how engaging that was, and how mm -hmm. he looked at it from the standpoint of okay, how do I engage my students, and turned and used it on the adults, and mm -hmm. and the articles about mm -hmm. how successful that was. Man, yeah, I need and to read that magazine. It's, it's a good one this month. It's good. One. I'm behind, yeah. girls. There is a lot. Uh, we're not even going to talk about that. <laughs> but there is a lot of research on that that's coming out, especially in um, in relation to teachers and teacher pro professional development and teacher communities. Mm -hmm. So if any of you are ever geeky enough that you care, I will totally send you links. <laughs> but um, there's a, it's just, it really makes you think that there's we're making such a huge impact with these networks, even just from EdReach or the BAM radio network all the way up to, you know, MOOCs and... Um, Twitter chats. Yeah, Twitter. Oh God, tweet chats are a whole other monster unto themselves, right? Mm -hmm. um, but how do you get, I mean, I feel like we touched on this. This is the theme of our, of our season two so far, is how do you get mm -hmm. other teachers who are not necessarily bought into it to buy right. in? Well, and see, I challenge the words buy in and mm -hmm. refuse to use them. And I say that we buy into textbook adoptions, we buy into discipline <laughs> plans, we buy oh into... Gosh. This roller coaster that we do in education, mm -hmm. and I challenge that we can't buy into uh, professional learning and technology. We must embrace it. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's hard to it's hard to get people. They to don't want to embrace it. I can tell you, they mm -hmm. don't want to embrace it. They mm -hmm. want to buy into it because they want to believe that in a year or two, and that's we've had this discussion too. It's not about the iPad or the Google right. tablet mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. any of that because in five years. Mm -hmm, and that's not going to be around either. Um, right. But they have to embrace the change mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. But the good news is that, A, we made it through an entire show without me getting kicked <laughs> out. Yes. Okay. And uh, we actually completed the show. But the best news is, is we can kind of carry this into next week because Perfect. next week we're going to be talking about leadership. And I think that professional learning um, is wonderful. I think if leadership does not back up your professional learning, you sink like a fish. Um, I know that in my role, and I'm sure Kate's role as well, if administrators don't support us or want to help us or back us or give us an initiative to run with, um, our jobs are incredibly difficult. So I'm very excited that next week we are actually going to be doing um, a leadership show with Amber Tiemann. Amber is in Texas. She actually just changed roles, so I'm not going to preface with her job because I don't really exactly know her new job. She was an administrator um, in Texas, and she is phenomenal. If you have not, if you don't know Amber, on Twitter she's um, at 8amber8. Um, I have known Amber for a while via Twitter, but finally got to meet her at ISTE, and she is phenomenal um, and the most photogenic chick ever. So I'm kind of bummed that we're going to be on edge of you with her, and she's going to look all cute again. Um, <laughs> But Amber will be joining us next week as we talk about leadership and education and what that should actually look like in terms of what we need to have um, to build in a future of, of learning and collaboration and cooperation as educators. So we're excited to have Amber next week. So um, after this show, look for that event page and go ahead and say, yes, I will be there because you don't want to miss Amber. She's like Miss Photogenic. And she if you is really cute. Okay. I just looked her up. Mm -hmm. 
And if yeah, you happen to be every a picture, pro- she looks like that. I mean, it doesn't matter. She's like, <laughs> if you've ever seen them, if you've ever watched uh, How I Met Your Mother, there's an episode where Barney is like, yes. they're always saying, how does Barney look like that in every single picture? Well, Amber is the Barney. It doesn't oh, matter wow. what picture you take. Amber's Barney. like, Oh my gosh, so baby. cute in every picture. And you know, the rest of us are like, eh, and our pictures. <laughs> I swear she is the most voted change chick ever. So well, that makes me happy that we're going to talk about leadership. So, classroom teachers who are listening, mm-hmm. this will be your chance to participate in the back channel where you can speak your mind. For sure. Within yes. season. <laughs> yeah. Let's keep it PG. But yes, we're oh, very yeah. excited, for sure. Um, I think leadership is just something we all enjoy kind of mm-hmm. discussing it's very important. in some way or another. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. Well, where can we follow each of us? So, Jamie, what's your what's your Twitter? Uh, on Twitter, I am at Jamie Vander G. That's J A I M E V A N D E R G. Mm-hmm. And you're on Google Plus. All of us are on Google Plus as well. We're everywhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Kate, how about what's your uh, what's your handle? Uh, at Georgia Tech Teach, and no, I do not work at Georgia Tech. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> asks me that. My daughter is actually at Georgia. So oh. that would be a conflict of interest. No, no. Um, at Georgia Tech Teach. And it's GA Tech. Correct, GA Tech. And Stasia, yourself? I am at SLM Tech Ed. Awesome. Nice and short and sweet. And there I am go. at Cat Flippin because I'm unoriginal. <laughs> <laughs> I figure that, you know, the name itself is fine. By the way, if you Google search it, you will find pictures of cats jumping. So, have fun. Oh, no. <laughs> you do. It's like page two. It's page two in, and you'll actually see a cat that's flipping. So, moving on. That is too funny. So, of course, you can follow Edge of You as we share the trending news during the week on Twitter at, yes. at Edge of You, and that's E-D-U-B-U-E. And then Kat's already mentioned our Google Plus page. And a big reminder and a very neat one for those new to EdReach, PBS and EdReach are collecting education wins by going to, get this, and I'll tweet this out, www.whatisyouredu.win.com, E-D-U win. Anyone can submit an hashtag edu win to help us shape the conversation of education into a positive one. If you see an innovation, a story, a moment happen, be a citizen reporter and tell the world. Submit an edu, hashtag eduin at what is your at www, <laughs> what is your eduin.com and let's change the story of education. And I'm going to tweet that out right now. Thank you. And also, don't forget, you know, we're speaking about Twitter. Follow EdReach. They're at EdReachUS on Twitter. And uh, do make sure to subscribe to the EdReach Weekly Newsletter and pass it on. That newsletter will contain all of the recordings, podcasts, everything. So you will, you don't want to miss that. Um, you can also do that at edreach.us slash newsletter, nice and short and easy. And um, these are great ways to get the latest blog posts, podcasts, and news coming out of the EdReach Network. Wonderful. So thanks again, guys, for joining us. We want to definitely continue the conversation now um, on our back channels. Feel free yes. to do that um, on Twitter. It is just uh, hashtag EdgeView, and, of course, on our event page, we can wrap that up. Um, until next week when Amber joins us, um, we hope to have that on the EdReach Network next week. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that is our goal. Um, so fingers crossed, next week we will be on the EdReach Network. Um, we do have a channel page, which is cat help me. Sure, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'm looking it up Ed right now because Reach. I totally am blanking uh, out. US. <laughs> There's edreach.us ha- uh, slash channel slash eduview. There and this this show as well as show notes and short information will also be posted on there within the next couple of days. So you'll be able to access all of our information in one location, finally. Yay! Then, so uh, thanks for joining us again. Make sure that you join us next week when Amber Tiemann joins us. Thank you again for tuning in for another amazing back channel, and we will see you next Monday night at 8.15. Thanks, guys. Have a good evening. Good night. night. night.